2020 was the equal warmest year on record. It was equal warmest with 2016, which happened to be an El Nino year. And El Nino years tend to bump up global temperature. La Nina years like this tend to drag it down. So in the absence of a La Nina year that we've experienced this year, we probably would have exceeded that 2016 record and we would be the hottest year on record. The changes we're seeing in, in climate, as well as in rainfall patterns, can have huge public health impacts. So for example, floods and droughts can both impact our drinking water quality, but also our recreational water quality, which limits the time that we can interact with nature, affecting our health and well-being. In many other ways, it's been exceptional. Obviously, things like the Black like Summer fires here, the massive wildfires over in California, and a whole range of other uh, impacts, including one of the strongest cyclones ever, uh, Cyclone Amphan, to hit India. What we've seen is, is, again, just that drumbeat of extreme events, the drumbeat of records being broken happening again and again in 2020. Australia so far lags behind uh, in terms of long-term net zero emissions targets, but change is definitely in the air. This economy can really turn around, decrease emissions greatly, and then make up for the remaining emissions by soaking carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Net zero by 2050 is good, but only if it also has matching interim targets like 45% reduction by 2030. We actually have an intrinsic comparative advantage in this country uh, with low-cost, clean energy. Australia could really be a, a large-scale producer of energy as well as industrial commodities for export. We've really got the best physical and economic preconditions for that right here in Australia.